apart from some standard intuitionistic assumptions, I am going to use uh, one or two other assumptions only, or perhaps that we might want to call them notational specifications. If I have a procedure represented by a natural number, and I apply it to an input n, I'm simply going to write that as the output. So take procedure number e and apply it to input number n and take the output. All the procedures I describe will be total, so I don't need to worry about its undefinedness right now. I'm going to use the notation that given any natural number, I can divide it up using unpairing into its components, E0 and E1. So I can do left unpairing and right unpairing. These are effective functions. I can do that in terms of prime number factors in the number E. And if I have some kind of effective predicate of natural numbers, and I can do lambda abstraction onto it, and I get an effective predicate of numbers now effective in x, where I'm now talking about in x, I output the procedure that accepts n as an input and produces theta xn. I'm going to use these little pieces of notation from elementary algorithm theory, elementary recursion theory, effective calculation theory. The proof proceeds almost entirely from the intuitionistic version of what you could call the T-scheme. Corresponds in a rough way uh, to Tarski's T-scheme from his great paper, The Wahrheits, Begriff. And I might write it this way. Phi is a sentence, or a sentence in parameters, and it holds if and only if there is a natural number E that encodes a construction such that E constructs phi. And one of the basic ideas of intuitionistic mathematics is that such a relation, I'm, writing, I'm using the forcing symbol, but I'll just read it constructs. Such a relation can be defined recursively, uh, and it can be proven to exist. It's an idea that goes back to Ernst Haitink, Kolmogorov, others. And I only really need two clauses from the definition of constructs. They're both familiar. I shall say that natural number E encodes a construction of there exists an X phi where here I'm thinking of all my variables throughout as ranging over natural numbers. That's not necessary, but for the, for the present purposes, it will be no limitation. This holds if and only if I can do unpairing on E, and E1 encodes a construction such that phi holds of E0, and just to be perfectly definite, here are the natural numbers. E0 is a natural number. Just write that there to remind ourselves that E0 is a natural number. And so I have a construction that constructs an existential statement if and only if that construction can be effectively broke apart into two sub-constructions, if you like, the second of which is a construction that phi is, holds on the first of which. And then secondly, E encodes a construction of a universal claim about natural numbers. By the way, I intend phi here to hold with respect to parameters and not just sentences. If and only if we think of E as encoding a total general recursive function. And 
for all natural numbers n, if I apply e to n, I get a construction for phi of n. This is an idea that you find in some of the later papers of David Hilbert, for example, when he explains what it is for such a statement to be true in a finitistic fashion. That is, that there is a procedure available on the basis of which I can enumerate proofs, finitistic proofs of phi applied to each natural number n. So it's a function. I input a natural number. I get a proof out, proof of phi of n. I should be careful, though. I'm not thinking of this as a concrete proof relation. I'm thinking of it as an abstract relation between, well, we could encode everything and call them between numbers, but at least between numbers and parameterized formulas. And now I'm going to begin to show from this claim and this partial definition that Church's thesis as understood by intuitionists uh, is true. So let's start out with the claim that phi, perhaps in parameters, defines a total relation over the natural numbers. For every natural number x, there's a natural number y, such that phi x y. Then, by the t-scheme, it follows that there is a construction that constructs this parameterized expression. Let me draw a line here separating these. And then it follows here's a universal quantifier over numbers, from this part of the definition that E is total, general recursive, function of numbers, and for every natural number n, if I apply E to n, n and take the result, it gives me a construction of this with x replaced by n. And I continue to reduce. I now have a complicated term standing in the constructs relation to a parameterized existential statement. And so if we call this one the for all clause and this one the existence clause, this holds by for all. And then by the existence, existence clause, we're going to get E is total. It's general recursive and for all n, now I apply the unpairing operation en1, right, written like that, constructs phi n en0. So I've just applied the existential clause here into the parameterized statement, and I know that the first, the second component of this constructs the formula instantiated on the first component. And now I'm going to apply the T scheme in reverse, going this way. I now know that E is total, general recursive, and for all n, my T-scheme tells me I can drop this off, phi n, E applied to n, zero, because this was a formulation that was assumed in parameters. And now, I'm going to do an abstraction. I'm going to let G encode the procedure that gives me lambda n, E n zero. I assumed that into functional context I can perform abstractions and recursivity is being preserved. Zero is total. We assume that E n is total. So this thing is total. It's general recursive. And we now have for all n phi 
n g of n. So putting it all together, here I've just used abstraction. Here I've used the T scheme. What do we have putting it all together? Start with this assumption. It is machine-free, computability-free, perhaps, statement. For every natural number x, there is a natural number y such that phi xy. What's the end of it? There is a total recursive function such that it uniformizes into phi. For every natural number n, phi holds of n and g of n. So what's our picture here? Phi gives us a cloud over the natural numbers n. Here's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And it tells us for each natural number, this is, this is the cloud phi xy. It's a relation, binary relation over the natural number. This tells us for each natural number, there is a natural number that's up in the cloud over it. And our conclusion tells us that there is a Turing computable function that will take in a uniform fashion and select for each number one of the number values that lie in the cloud over it. And this is the intuitionistic form of Church's thesis. It tells us that every total natural number relation is uniformized by a general recursive function that is also total.